All right, so to tackle this problem, we're going to start off with drawing a picture. Um, I've already taken the liberty to do so. so. All right, we have our ramp here. We know it makes a 41.3 degree angle with the ground. I've labeled the end of the ramp Q. We know we've set a board that has length 20.6 feet on top of this ramp, touches the ramp at the point R, touches the ground at the point P, and P is a distance of 12.2 feet from the point Q. And then we're trying to find the distance between Q and R. And I've gone ahead and labeled that distance, that side, A. Now, to tackle this, we're going to want to utilize okay, naturally some trigonometry here. But your first inclination might be looking at the right triangle, and that's actually going to be a little bit misleading here. We're going to want to look at this non-right triangle, PQR. The reason being is that we have a little bit more information on that triangle as opposed to the right triangle. Utilizing supplementary angles, I can figure out the measure of this angle here by taking 180 degrees minus 41.3 degrees to get 138.7 degrees. And then noticing that, hey, I have an angle. I know the measure of a side opposite that angle. I have another side length in this triangle that I know, the 12.2. But then there's two other angles I don't know and a missing side. Q here is angle and the measure of a side opposite that angle. Two things you might want to think about then will be either law of cosines or law of sines. Um, given that I don't have a lot, we don't have a lot of information here, we'll want to hit this with law of sines. And I have that over on the left here. Alpha, beta, gamma are angles in the triangle. A, B, C are the lengths of sides in that triangle, and they correspond that A is opposite the angle alpha, B is opposite the angle beta. Given that we know one side length and the angle opposite, we're going to utilize that ratio to find the missing ones. And what we're going to start off with is we're going to try to find the angle beta, because we know that we have the measure of the side opposite beta. Plugging those values into our, our, our law here, uh, we come up with the following equation, all right? I have the angle 138.7, the measure of the side opposite that, unknown angle beta, and the measure of the uh, length of the side opposite that. We're going to go through and solve for beta here. So I multiply both sides by 12.2, moving that to the other side. To get at the angle beta, we're going to need to take the inverse sine of both sides, which we've gone ahead and done here. Now we're left with a pretty nasty looking thing here. And for right now, just for the sake of exactness, I'm not going to try to find the decimal approximation for that. I'm just going to leave that as is. Um, I don't want to try to approximate until my very last step, just to get as exact of an answer as I can. Now, that means we found the angle beta. Now, if we go back to the triangle PQR, notice what we have now. We know the sum of three angles, the sum of the angles in the triangle is 180. And now, as a result of our work here, we know two of those three angles, alpha being the missing one. Utilizing that relationship, the sum of my angles is going to be 180. If I go through and solve for alpha, we get that alpha is going to be equal to 41.3 degrees minus beta, where beta is this whole nasty looking thing on the left hand side. Now, we can hit this with law of sines again. Why? Because we're trying to find A. But to find A, we would have to know the measure of the angle that's opposite the side A, which we just found uh, in our last bit of work here. I'm going to go ahead and hit this again with the given values um, that I had here. Uh, so the 20.6 and the 138.7. Hit this again with law of sines. I start off with the initial ratios, um, where for right now, I've just A is the value that we had over here. I'm going to plug those values in for a minute, but just so you see what we're starting off with. When I plug in the values uh, for alpha, we get this whole nasty looking thing over here. And remember, alpha is equal to 100, or excuse me, is uh, 41.3 minus beta. There's my 41.3, and beta was this whole thing over here, which we've now placed right here. We have to go through and solve for A. A is right now trapped in the denominator, so I need to get it outside of that. I can easily do that by multiplying both sides by the value of A. Um, that will cancel out the A over here. I get an A on this side. To eliminate um, the value I have on the right side of the equation, I'm going to multiply it by its reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 20.6 and divide both sides by the sign of the angle. In doing so, we will result in this, again, nasty looking, really complicated looking form. Uh, and again, I've kept the values the same right now simply because we want to try to get an exact answer in the end. And I don't want to do too many approximations prior to. 
At this point here, you can then go through and plug this into your calculator to figure out your values. Um, going through and doing this computation, if you plug that all in, you're going to get pretty long decimal, but if we round it to simply the one decimal place, keeping true to the given information, 20.6, all have been to one decimal place, uh, we get 9.8 feet as the measure from P, excuse me, from Q to R. Thank you.